Hey guys, so I think that to really understand Gauss's law a bit better, you're going to need to have at least a qualitative understanding of something a bit more advanced. So I'm going to try to explain and use the concept of divergence to um, give a bit more insight into what Gauss's law actually says and how it works and why it works. So the concept of divergence, just from qualitative, so I'm not going to go into the mathematics exactly of it, but just if you have a vector field, then at this point, since all the vectors are, are going away of it, the divergence of the electric field, this is the notation, it's just a, a delta on its head with a, a, with a dot product with the electric field, it's going to be positive since it's going away. So it has positive divergence, the, um, the lines basically diverge from that point. If we have a lot of arrows into a point, we're going to have negative divergence because everything is coming into that point. So then we get this equation, which is part of Maxwell's equations, if you know what that is, which says that the divergence of the electric field at any point is exactly equal to the um, to the charge density at that point, that's what rho is, divided by our constant epsilon naught. So we want, we have from this exactly the charge density, but if we want to get the charge enclosed in a certain area, we obviously have to do an integral over that entire area and get the charge density over that entire, well, volume actually in this case, since it's uh, a density and we're working in 3D space. So we're going to have to go do a triple integral over the x, y, and z components of this, and then go basically a cube or a sphere or some weird um, shape. We're going to do this weird integral. Then we're going to get this, but this simplifies. Since we have this row here, you might not be able to see it, but those are three integrals and then a the row for charge density. So charge density integrated over a volume is going to give you the charge, and then it's just a constant again. But you see, this is quite complicated. Doing this is not really trivial um, and gets quite hard. So for that, we're going to use what we call the divergence theorem. Um, I'm going to give a quick overview um, to at least give you a feel of why it works, and then we're going to see it simplifies this immensely, and then we're going to get Gauss's law that we had um, anyway. So then hopefully you can at least understand why Gauss's law actually works. So I made a little sketch here, just over an area. The, the same concept applies in three, um, 3D. It isn't hard to see how it generalizes. But so if we have our piece of area here and we divide it into these small squares, we can imagine the area is bigger somewhere. This can go on infinitely. Um, and if you do the area integral, you're obviously going to effectively be dividing it into these little blocks that you can actually integrate over. And we want to integrate over the divergence of all these blocks due to the previous um, equation. So we want to know the divergence of this block plus the divergence of that block plus the divergence of that block. But luckily, we have a very nice simplification that we can find here. So we can see that from this block over here, the um, any, any arrow that diverges out of this block, so positive um, divergence, goes straight into the next block, which is negative divergence. And it's the same arrow. So it, its contribution exactly cancels out. This one is say positive x, and then this one is negative x. And since you're going to sum over all of them, it's exactly going to cancel out. You can see from this block to this block, this has positive divergence in this block and negative in this one. So it's going to cancel out. This does it for any block inside this, except if it's on the edge. If it's on the edge, then we're going to notice that it can, in fact, go outside. And if it's outside, then there's no block to cancel it out with. But as you go smaller and smaller, you're going to see that you have to only take the component of these vector that actually goes straight out. Because if it goes slightly to the side, the component that goes to the side is going to effectively go into the next block in the infinitesimal case, and then it's going to just cancel out. So if you take all the vectors that are on the edge and you take their components, which are exactly um, normal to this edge, so that's the normal vector we did, then that's just going to give you the same thing as the entire area's divergence. So this simplifies our previous integral from a triple integral that's almost intractable to just this surface integral, or in, in 3D surface integral, um, which you can just do in terms of your normal vector which is, a, of course, a very welcome simplification. And in essence, that's just what the divergence theorem tells us, and that's why we can get Gauss's law and those nice simplifications. I'll do another video that goes a bit more 
into the concepts otherwise used, but this is just an advanced overview um, to hopefully give you a feel of exactly what's going on beneath the hood here. Um, the math can obviously get a lot more complex, but this is the, the qualitative way of viewing Gauss's law.